Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my day 16 of my quarantine distraction videos. And normally I would provide you some sort of a video on working in clay, something clay related. But today, uh, life threw me a little bit of a curveball. Um, our youngest daughter, who is 18, and she is one of the essential workers. She works in a, a food place. Um, she's uh, not been isolated like we have necessarily been in the house because she's been reporting to work. Um, and she came down with a fever today. Now, ordinarily, that would not be a big deal, but she's got a fever and a cough. So, as a worried mom, I'm a little bit concerned about this. Um, since she has no known uh, exposure to anyone who has um, the virus, when she's not going to be tested, but we were told to just, you know, just take care of her, uh, let it run its course. And um, maybe it's just allergies or a seasonal cold or something like that. We're not too sure. But um, I'm not taking any chances, and being the worried mom, I need some masks today. So um, n not that it's going to prevent us from getting it, but I'll have her put it on when she comes out of her uh, bedroom. She's walking around the house, so it might contain a little bit more of, uh, of her. And I've made multiple, so I can launder them, and you know we can uh, uh, give her clean ones from time to time. So... If you want to know how to do this, I have a little tutorial here on how to make a super simple sewn mask. And tomorrow we'll get back in the clay. So stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can. The measurements for this will be in the video description, um, but I'm using a 9x6 rectangle. You can see on the short edges that uh, that's where the elastic is going to be going. It's just sewn at the corners. And then there are going to be three tucks or pleats on each of the short sides. Okay, and I got these measurements online, so this was suggested. Okay, so I start off by cutting the elastic in seven inch lengths, and then I'm putting a knot in the end, as close to the end as I can get it without it coming apart. So both pieces of elastic have a little knot. I'm starting out with both of my rectangles face to face, and when I begin sewing, I start sewing about halfway on one of the long sides. I'm sewing in the direction of a corner. Now before I get all the way to the corner, I'm going to insert that elastic so the knot of it is to the outside and the larger string of the elastic goes toward the inside. So again, these are face to face. This is inside out right now. And then I turn the corner. The elastic is now sewn in the corner. And when I get to the next corner, I, I just hesitate, go a little bit slowly, get the elastic in that corner again. Sew over that. And then rotate, turn the corner again. Now I'm ready to do the long edge. And same thing. When I get to this corner, I hesitate. I fold back fabric. I insert that so the little knot is stuck on the outside of the seam. And then after I sew over it, I turn the corner and go around. And when I eventually turn the final corner here, I w am going to leave a gap of about two, two and a half inches. So as I, I back stitch there a little bit and I'm leaving an unsewn gap of two and a half inches. Now before I turn this inside out, I'm going to take just a teensy bit of the extra fabric off of the corners. So this is like if you're sewing clothes, sometimes you take a little bit of the um, extra fabric off on the corner so you don't have quite so much when you turn it inside out. It, I'm not cutting the elastic though because I don't want the elastic to pull through just in case. I'm leaving the knot. So I'm just trimming off a little bit of extra. That way, when I go to turn it inside out, it won't be so bulky. And now I'm taking it and I'm turning it inside out. 
and you'll see the elastic is right there. So I can use the elastic to help pull the corners out. There we go. Now, I did make a big mistake on this, but I knew it when I cut it, but I went ahead and sewed it anyway. You can see the black and white, the um, little trump, the uh, fleur-de-lis that's on there. I have it going in the wrong direction on the blue side. So when I cut out the blue, I realized what I had done. I'm just trying to fix one of the corners there where it was kind of rounded, just pulling it out some. Now I'm going to top stitch, going all the way around. And I'm doing it fairly close. It's probably like an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm just top stitching so that it's closing up the hole as well. And I'm going to do that all the way around. That's a pretty simple little top stitch there. And I know I'm not even using the correct color thread for this, but I really wasn't that concerned because it's just something to use around the house. I was going for efficiency today. I wasn't really going for um, beauty on this one. So again, you can see how the elastic is corner to corner on the short sides. And this is that skinny little, um, I don't know if you call it rope elastic, but it's, it's not flat elastic. Okay, now at this point, to make it cup, you're going to be putting a pleat in it. So I do it about an inch in the middle. I just overlap it, and I'm pleating it. And I'm going to do that again. Overlap and pleat. And then I'm pinning it, and overlap and pleat. Now if you have an upside or a downside, you might want to you know, make sure that your pleats look good. And you want to make sure the pleats side to side are angling in the same direction. Like you want them both to be angling down, not one up, one down. So it's three little tucks. Or pleats. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And now I'm just going to sew those really quickly. And by the way, you may notice that I have the light off on my sewing machine. Um, I don't normally sew with the light off. Um, I was having uh, some issues with it looking super washed out for the video, so that's why I turned the light off. So I just sewed over it and then back again. So I sewed twice over the little pleats. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And this whole um, sewing from start to finish is less than 10 minutes, even though I sped it up. It's a pretty fast um, thing. And then see, I'm just turning that around and sewing back over it again. So if you feel like you need to make some masks, hopefully you'll find this little tutorial helpful and simple, but um, hopefully it can help keep us a little bit healthier in our family. So. Good luck.